If you put Meryl Streep on iCarly, I would be like, I'm changing the channel. I'm going to be an astrology bitch real quick. What do you mean the sea parted? You're tripping. <laughs> Why? Why am I trying to be relatable to stank ass people? One thing I'm a fan girl about Arda. is Moby Dick. <laughs> well, we know you're a fan of... But come on. <laughs> <laughs> I am Bruce. I am who I'm meant to be. Oh, this is me. What was that? Uh, okay, James. James. Okay. James. <laughs> yes. Oh what my was God, that? Guys. I've been um, doing that around the office at work, and I work with a guy named James, and he keeps being like, "What? What?" <laughs> <laughs> He's getting. I'll just be in the common area going, "James." <laughs> Literally, who is James? Is that her, like, <laughs> I, I, some cameraman? Some producer, yeah, I it's think. Somebody on, so it's a hand. Oh my God, is this? Okay. I was like, what is that? Is there that a metronome? Sound? It's a metronome. It's Come like, on. we are singing. Oh my God. This is different. the greatest show. It sounds like the beginning of this is the greatest show. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. There was yeah. this Bible game that I played on PlayStation, and really? it was like, I vividly remember, I don't know what the name of it was, but it was like, it was all these like Bible themed games. Oh my God. And there was this one that I was obsessed with. It was like Moses parts the Red Sea, and it was like, you have to run through the Red Sea and like collect all the little, like, whatever points. And I don't know what the name of the game was, but it was. I remember playing that game, the Moses one, on so often. It, it was on PlayStation. Fun. It was like called like the Bible game or like the Bible, I like whatever. That. Like I don't know. Like someone look it up because I swear to God, the like Bible game. <laughs> like I mean, and it, it was like a blue case, and it was like all these little kids, and like they were like like you were like competing. Like it was like it was very much like Mario Party, but like for the Bible. Like you know what I mean? Like I get it because I loved Veggie Tales. Yes, I love Veggie Tales. I loved it. Apparently, um, I just learned that the Veggie Tales guy is uh like pro gay, like is like really progressive. I Oh. What? Okay, period. Right? Is, he pro, okay. is he pro trans? Um, I mean, let's, <laughs> let's, not, get, I let's, not, get, let's not get let's not get too ambitious, okay? Because <laughs> look, you can be pro gay, pro gay all the way down, but when it, you need to be pro trans. Yes. <gasps> Wait, okay, let's I introduce our guests. <laughs> oh, right, right. If you know about oh, this game, write in. You know, t I don't know how. Yeah, DM in. us. Yes, literally. If you have somebody, this Bible game, yeah, please. mail mail us the Bible game. I'll give you our home address. <laughs> mail us the Bible game. <gasps> we are in the studio. The Bible game. No, that's what it was. Oh my god, that's what it was. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. The oh, Bible game. That's... My God, stop. Let me no. See it. Let me see it. I've been there's a whale and there's a lion. I haven't seen this cover in so long. It's so nostalgic. Y'all, you have to look. This is like what um, older people feel when they actually look at the real Bible. <laughs> there's a whale. <laughs> You're right. Like the whale is really prominent on this. Right? And it's like. Oh, it's like so... Jonah. Okay, Jonah. Yes, Jonah. The whale. See, how did Jonah survive being in a whale's belly? <laughs> What are y'all fucking talking about? They're uh, parables. Sorry. They're parables. Okay, Amber, I understand where the anger's coming from. We went to the Church of Christ <laughs> where where they taught us that everything in the Bible happened literally and you cannot interpret it as a parable or a metaphor. However, <laughs> they are parables. No, they are, because like let's be honest. Like, so what was what was the what was it? What what actually happened? To it was Jonah? just like he prayed and like God like helped him, you know. Yeah. Like that didn't happen though. Right. You know? I, like, I guess I did, was he on a ship when he got swallowed. I don't, what I don't was he know. doing out in the sea? What was he doing out in the sea to get eaten by a whale? He I must guess. he must have been on a ship and he got shipwrecked. That's what yeah, I, that's what I feel like. Yeah. What is the story of Moby Dick? That's not in the Bible at all. I know that, <laughs> but what is it? Wait, what is the there, story? There's a there's a, I think they're pirates, right? And Ooh. they're sailing, and the guy Ahab Ahab wants to um like kill this like monster okay um, we never read of a it whale well. and the I whale did. just keeps fucking everything up okay yeah. because it's like man versus because the whales and Aries I don't know if they're pi <laughs> I don't know if they're pirates I feel <laughs> like they it? are pirates they, they probably, probably are they're right. right they're probably Ahab, Ahab. yeah arg one thing I'm a fan girl about is Moby Dick <laughs> can you imagine yeah. well we know you're a fan of but come on <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's I'm proud of that wait, one. But speaking I'm of that, but wait, but wait, but wait, but speaking of the Moby part, do y'all know uh, what was Tim and Moby? Tim and Moby. Tim, Tim and Moby. What brain pop? Uh, yeah, brain come pop. On, Tim brain. and Moby. What's 
the What's the sound? <laughs> They're gonna explode. The podcast is gonna break. Oh my god! Brain pop wait, was wait, fantastic. Wait, wait, you were the first person ever yeah. to know who Tim and Moby is. That's true. Really? I have said That's Tim true. and Moby to so many people I've met since middle school. They're like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Yeah, dear Tim and Moby. Dear Tim, dear and, Tim and Moby. Dear I Tim and Moby. With them. Me too. I was like, assign me some brain pop. I'll take some my notes. Brain I would always pop. Yes. Pop. Quizzes. Pop. Pop. Brain. Pop. Pop. Brain. Pop. 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 Pop, pop, pop. Community. I feel like, I feel like they would always like, I don't remember, their, <laughs> I, their dynamic I remember was like, Tim would be kind of like, this is like a science thing or like this is a history thing. And then Moby would be like, I'm in a thong in like the background. And he would be like, Moby. <laughs> oh, right. He would always be like, Moby. Moby, Moby, was, Moby was always, Moby, Moby was, was like, diva. <laughs> ba, ba, bo, bo, bo. Cause he Moby didn't talk, like, I don't right? know what y'all talking about, but no. I'm It was just here. beeps and bops. <laughs> yeah, he just went, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he Tim would be like, oh, huh, that's funny. <laughs> Isn't it, Moby? And, and Moby would be like, Bring! I also, also like Tim's <laughs> voice was Moby like was automatic, favorite. like auto generated. It was like Siri, like literally, it was like, was it? Dear Tim and Moby. Yeah. My ba, my da, 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 da. It was scary a little bit. It was bit. like simlish was, because like he wouldn't. No, I way, really liked it. <laughs> <neither> <laughs> it like scratched my brain in a way where I was like. It's like what the TikTok voice well, is before the TikTok voice. Yeah, I think it's because you have to listen to what he's saying or like it processes maybe because of the way it sounds. But I wanted to say the way they look from side to side on the Brain Pump videos, like they don't move their heads. Yeah, because they're just like, being oh, like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, I kind of love that. It was like iconic. Yeah, he'd be like, Moby, don't, what you think? And Moby would be like. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> I be like, did you just call them a Moby? Cunt? Moby, Moby. And Moby. Like, yeah, Jesus Moby. Christ, Moby. Language. Moby was a shady queen. Like Moby was like, yeah, child. <laughs> like I guess. Like, <laughs> yeah, tell him. I don't know. Moby didn't want to be in class. No, no. he's like, I'm a robot. Like, I don't don't tell need me to anything. learn anything. I know everything. Moby wanted to be in the club. Right. <laughs> like uh, Moby wanted to be in, in, a, in the club at a thong. I mean, maybe <laughs> was literally a robot. <laughs> Moby didn't need any lessons. No. Okay, now we need to introduce. Okay. okay. We are, um, hello, I'm Amanda. I'm Amber. Welcome back to Fangirl Central, where being a fangirl, fangirl is central, central to our identity. identity. Today, we have icons. We have icons in the studio. In the studio, in front of us. <laughs> we are so excited to have them. <laughs> you might recognize one of them from our We Need to Talk About Harry Potter episode. Mm -hmm. Come on. She is a comedian. She's back, she's back. She is a writer. She's an actress. Actrice. <laughs> Actrice. Actrice. I like the word actrice better. Yeah. Actrice. Um, and the second icon. <laughs> Can you tell I'm so bad at introducing people? I know, same. I the always second panic. icon in, so in well. the studio is a singer, a dancer. A I met the, the first time I ever saw her was when she was belting SZA. <gasps> wow. If you can believe. That's we a have privilege. Hayden Johnson and Jordan, Jordan Jones. Jones. Ah! Welcome to the studio. Welcome to Thank the studio. Thank y'all for having us. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to get into what we're going to talk about today. Yay. This is, I feel like this is a long time coming because we literally sat in the studio and could have damn near recorded another pod, like four podcast episodes sitting talking to y'all. Yes. Yeah. Because. No, literally. Yeah, we got here and didn't start. Literally. <laughs> it's just so, yeah, I was literally like, I was rushing her out the door. I was being like, we're going to be late to the podcast. We were five <laughs> minutes late and then we sat and talked for like 40 minutes. Right. Just, like, I was like, okay. We'll but I didn't know, I didn't, know in there. I didn't know if y'all were renting the space and then, you know, we had to yeah. be yeah. out of here. Understandable. Yeah. It's a Saturday. We do have kind of Unlimited time. Oh my exactly. So bit. we can go. A little bit. So we can go crazy. Let's get crazy. Let's get crazy. Let's not get too crazy. Yeah, let's do it. Um, oh I think that y'all are literally the definition of fangirls. Like the way, cause the the way that I interpret it and the way that we like talk about it on here is like you're such a fan of what you do, mm -hmm. and like you know so much about what you do that it makes you really good at yes. what you do. And like also, I was literally remembering the first time you were on the podcast, Hayden, and you were like, yeah, I've loved stand-up comedy since I was literally yeah. a child. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. like, like you listening to albums. Okay, so that's why you're so good at it. Yeah. yeah. Because I was listening to just, I was like sitting alone in my room just listening and laughing by myself like I was a fucking <laughs> serial <laughs> killer. Like that's, that's <laughs> passion. Like that, you guys are two, like two of the most passionate people I know. Like, yeah, that I, actually, that means so much. It, it's <laughs> very true. Like, I feel the the reason that we get into conversations that kind of go endlessly is because we're like very passionate about what we're yes. talking about, whatever it is. Yeah, that it just keeps going, which no, is literally. being a fangirl. It's literally. just like, just tell me when to stop because I'm not going literally, to. Literally, because we won't. <laughs> yeah, I, I also feel like we'll find each other at a party, and like the four of us can just like be talking for yes. the entire the entire night. party. Yes, <laughs> like, let's like, just go in a corner. Yeah, yeah. I was watching The Greatest Showman as homework for this episode. 
episode. Come on. And Michelle Williams said something. And I was like, why does this remind me of Britney Spears? And it's because she reads the audiobook. She said something with the same inflection. She says something that she's reading. And I was like, oh. I was like, that wasn't Britney talking. That was literally this woman talking. It was Michelle Williams talking. It was funny. I love <laughs> Michelle Williams. I do too. Really? I, I love her, yeah. I haven't really thought about her. Talk more. Well, I just think she's amazing in The Greatest Showman. Like, mm. t- talk about superstar because that's our our topic yeah. of the day is like superstardom and like what makes a star yeah. and why the process of becoming a star is so like addicting mm. yeah. to yeah. watch. Mm. But like, yeah. she is just, I don't know, just I've seen a lot of her movies and like there's something about her that's like, yeah, she's a star. Yeah, mm. she has like an undeniable, and you can see that. I feel like every time we were just talking before we started about like being able to see someone on screen and be like, that is a star. I want to yes. follow exactly what they're doing. I want to know where they go because Ugh, yeah. they are so, like, everyone else is acting. Right. But that person is fucking there. Yes. Like, yeah. That person yeah. is the character. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and she like, so dedicates it. With, yeah. like, their, their presence. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I do love Tightrope. That is a beautiful oh, song. God. The way that the choreography, t- speaking of choreography and, like, music, like, that, I think, okay, so The Greatest Showman is, like, crazy. The the it's top the top it's like okay this white man who's saving all yeah. these cr- weirdos and, and, like, these and ultimately weirdos. and ultimately is that story like co- completely made up for the sake more of, sure uh, yeah. made up like this man in real life was a horrible was horrible man. 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 like they forgive him way too fast on a, oh, on yeah. a true story yeah but I also I really think that the only thing wrong about the movie is the plot and the dialogue because everything else is working so <laughs> well yeah. the only thing wrong with the movie is so the plot and the dialogue there was like but music music the, the dancing, dancing yes the the costumes the, yes. the, the camera choreo- the, the camera is where it needs to be the camera the camera is where i want it to be oh, yeah. and I, the choreo of the like drapes dancing with her dress in the first song oh, yeah what's the first song called uh, uh when they start when they're kids when it's yeah. like ah. why can't i i don't i don't remember it but can i say that the <laughs> one that makes me cry every single time is when they're in like the apartment together mm-hmm. and like the kids are like going to sleep in like the tiny little bed yeah. And he's like, I'm going to like do this for my fam. That's the song that I'm talking about. What? I what can't remember it's, it's, how it I goes, rem- but it, it makes me ball. I, a million dreams. A oh, yes. A million dreams, dreams for the world we're, we're going to make. Yeah, that. When the kids start singing the, that song. When the yes. kids. Oh, when yes. a child starts singing. My face. When a child starts singing. When a child starts singing. And, and, and it's also, the, the, all of the songs in this movie, for some reason, make tears immediately just want to well up to your yeah. eyes. I don't know what it is, if it's yeah. like the, the key, the, the note, or what. I was They're just. Very evoc- I'm like, who did the music for that? I'm yeah. Because okay. they, they did a really good job. It was <laughs> the screen, it was the, it was the writers who did the music for Dear Evan Hansen. Oh, wait. That right? Is that right? Wait, and is that right? That wait, kind of makes sense. I also think that that Panic at the Disco did a song for it. Echo City. Wait, really? Am who? I making that up? I think Panic at the Wait. Disco made a song for Greatest Showman. Please tell oh us my God, which one. What? Panic at the I Disco. Have to, I have to turn on my phone to figure oh. this out. But Wait, let me look it up. It's, I literally <laughs> think that Panic at the Disco did a song for Greatest Showman. Is it the one with Zac Efron and Hugh Jackman? The it's, other side? I think it might be the one with Zendaya we and write the Zac stars. Efron. Oh, we oh write the stars? God, I think that they might have done that one. I, you were going to look song. it up and I'm going to be dead wrong. And you're going to be like, what the fuck? Why would you think that? Oh, <laughs> they covered the song The Greatest Show. I think they wrote it. Oh, really? Because it says they covered. Because <laughs> it says that you're wrong. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely not what it says. Yeah, okay. yeah. It was It was on The Greatest Showman Reimagined. Wow. Okay, May- yeah, maybe I. But now I want to hear it. In my ha- in my head, Panic at the Disco wrote the song. For I, <laughs> that's <laughs> fair. Okay, and they could have. Brendan Yuri, I think I, is problematic, but I do want to hear that version. Yes, I was. Yeah, I, w- I, I agree with everything you said. <laughs> I was obsessed with Panic at the yeah. Disco in high school. Yes. I think I, mean, I was I had, too. I, had a I think we all. Were. I mean, they they had good music, but I want to beat Brendan Yuri. Yeah. yeah, I saw and I, Miss Jackson the music video, and I was like, oh yeah. I saw it was I was late to it. It was um Emperor's new clothes. Yeah, clothes. that was the one that And I was like the devil oh, is hot. The devil. Cuz remember he, have you seen the music video? He turns into the devil. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> he is the devil. He is, and he yeah. and that man is and the devil. And lord, I I think he's just like I, creepy with fans. I think he's creepy with fans and I yes. remember he hit someone into the band or something. Oh, oh, he like yeah, he was super like abusive to the band. Like he like punched somebody but in the face. But he gives an abusive energy. Like he, he look does. At it, it's like oh, like he would abuse somebody. The way that he laughs. laughs. Like, like, the way that he laughs. Sorry, it's the way that he laughs in interviews. 
How? His, do it. His eyes are just like these dark pits and his mouth gets very loud and it's just like a, do you have a soul? Like a joker laugh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Brendan. You're right. No, don't. Uh -uh. Yeah, if he's listening. No, one of his band members like reposted an old video of him like, I think he like, uh, like hit a Nerf gun like really close to his face yeah. while he was playing guitar and then like he had to laugh it off and he was like, ha ha ha, I love when my band member hits a close range Nerf gun in my face and I have to play it off like I'm not like completely in pain in front of a million people but he's the lead singer so I gotta just laugh it off. God. There's so many power dynamics that people need to work in with. Yeah. And that's the dark side of superstardom. It that is. is. Yeah. It is. You, you can rise to the light or you can sink into the dark, but yeah. both of them have power. <laughs> right. Hugh Jackman and Brendan Urie are on opposite ends of the, the spectrum. The spectrum. In terms of uh, how to be a how to be a superstar. That's oh, right. Hugh Jackman. That's right. This movie, like, I have a crush on Hugh Jackman. I would like uh, Hugh Jackman do things <laughs> who so unspeakable to me. It is He's so handsome. Wild. Like, I don't he know what really it is. Hot. It's like the, he has like this classic like I and I'm not a Pride and Prejudice fan, but like I not I don't have a problem with it, but like I just don't care about it. He has a classic Mr. Darcy feel to him. Yeah, mm -hmm. I the yes. song that mm -hmm. he has with Zac Efron when they started yes. singing. I in the theater. I remember the first time I saw it. I was like speechless. Like I felt like I was gonna Same. start to choke on nothing because Same. Zac Efron and Hugh Jackman were harmonizing. Like I was yeah. like, yeah. this is so such an. Yeah. This is this is hornier than gay porn. Oh. Like this no, is like literally. what the two of these men are doing with each other is like <laughs> oh my God, beyond. Down. Oh my God! I was like down. when he when Hugh Jackman started singing to Zac Efron, I was like. Instantly, the first thing I thought was, they're gonna harmonize. The music. Later, they're gonna harmonize. Ah! Wait, okay, because God. I was building furniture. I just moved, and so I was building furniture while watching, and I was not paying attention. And then I heard the song in the background. I was like, wait a second. I f this sounds like the song that Zac Efron's about to come in. And I, I was so panicked. I had to rewind. I had to rewind. And I was like, okay, now pay attention. But like, yeah. I literally wasn't really paying attention to the movie until that part. I was like, flew in and stopped yeah, because something hammering about, away. Something about it, just... God, when they're in the bar and they're just. It's just like uh, also the po the power of Zac Efron specifically like the nostalgia. I just didn't think I would see him knee sliding or singing or dancing any either, yeah. ever, ever again. again in my life. He because he said he wouldn't. Yeah, he was like, no, I'm not gonna sing and dance. Yeah, and right, so it's because he said he wouldn't. It's so funny, like the <laughs> things that like musical theater esque people will be like. I had to take on this passion prod. Like I had to come out of you <laughs> know retirement. my retirement to do, and it's like, <laughs> and it's the greatest showman, and that's the one. <laughs> You like I a project that but spoke to, to me so to deeply. Love exactly. No, exactly. And like, that's, he came that's to why kiss he did that. And he kept saying Being it was the Zendaya? best kiss of his yeah. life. Yeah, like best kiss of his best life. Best kiss of his life in interviews. And Zendaya, I, Zendaya would be Zendaya. like, Zendaya would be like, oh, I know. Zendaya, got Zendaya went. It, it was Zendaya fun. Got it. I wrote, yes, I wrote. How did Zendaya do this? Rewrite the stars flying. With Rewrite that. the stars. The like kids? the way that she's like. I love her voice. The I love her, her voice. It's a nice so tone. Just like smooth yeah. and soft. It's like, and like I love her album. That that yeah. debut album that she had with the replay. The oh yeah. Yes. 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 I, I yeah. love that song, and I was like. She is singing it. These two Disney Channel stars had to like come back to their Disney. I, I don't that know. Was, I know. That was a good duo. I'm so happy that they were casted together. I feel like that was Me a too. really good duo. It was like we had the High School Musical like like era come back, and then we had like Zendaya who was like up and coming. Like, yeah. Yes. Just like the marrying of that was so. Those two, yeah. I think, are two of the biggest like Disney. superstars. Yeah, yeah. like to come like out Disney, Disney to like to start out of Disney. Disney. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe no. less Zac Efron just because he didn't. Keep up with it. Zendaya's just so famous. Yeah, Zendaya, and she keeps she keeps going. Like she's yeah. like continuing to just like rise yeah. and rise and rise and yeah. take on more mm -hmm. challenging roles and like show more of her personality. She does and, like, so many she just things. Is an it girl. She yeah. is a star. It's like, so interesting because we when we were rewatching Camp Rock, Rashawn Fagan is in Camp Rock, and he oh, played her brother right. on Shake It Up, and I was like thinking it just. It drew me down this track of like thinking about the people that knew her when she was on Disney Channel and yeah. like I wonder what she was giving off when they were like with her like I I've only heard like she was lovely to work with she was really focused she was really determined but like I wonder how it was showing up to set being like oh there's something different about her because I know there, yeah. was. Yeah. there right. was like I know there was on a Disney Channel set it's like there's something different about her she like Raven Simone has that quality you know yeah. like yeah. when you go to set and he's like you're inspired to keep working because and she so knows Kiki what Palmer. she's doing yeah, yeah. Uh, no and Kiki Palmer mm -hmm. for sure it's like Kiki. literally the yeah. people that are just that have that that have that star energy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's so crazy to be like wow they were just like kind of with Pretty like normal like child actors. Like, exactly. They're well, like fine. Specifically 
Zendaya, I want to like give her her flowers because I always supported her just as a black girl growing up. I was just kind of like, too. when she was in Spider Man, one she didn't get a lot of like screen time, but I did come, I did come from it, and I was like, you know, she isn't the best, but like they really used her to hype up the Spider Man promo. But and so, but then just seeing her from Homecoming to every other project she's done after it, she you can actively see that she dedicated herself to acting classes to like yes. putting it all in the face. Like there's a Disney type of acting. I'll say there's a Disney 2010s type of acting that's very like it's very specific where it's like you're clearly like performing you're like like, indicating a lot and you're like you're like gesturing a lot yeah yeah. it's all it's like here and it's yeah it's yeah it's a lot of gesturing and so it's a different thing like and not everyone can do Disney acting either not everyone can do Disney acting and not everyone can just do you know acting period but like (laughs) if you put Meryl Streep on iCarly I would be like I'm changing the channel exactly I can't that's a good thing she couldn't do that yeah yeah it would be like I Clearly, mean. everyone's act like it would just take you out of the sitcom thing. Yeah. So and yeah. like, but Emma Stone could do it. But Emma, yeah. Stone Emma Stone could do, do it. it. But Emma Stone, Stone could do, do it. it. And that's a whole other. Com- we should make a bracket one day. Yes. Of like, who can do different the, types of acting? Yeah. 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 But but with her, like, yeah, I was just kind of like, it was a slow burn for me where I was like, I'm not gonna give up hope. I was like, I know she is great, and I all, I, knew I there only was so want much her to more. get better. Yeah. yeah there like was... I've always been so proud of her. I only want her to get better, and she has actively gotten so much better. I can't, like, I have, n- there's not a single insult someone could say about Zendaya. And Even I, that makes sense. Like, and also, <laughs> it's like, the thing that inspired me, that she inspired in me was like, I don't know, I feel like so many people, they're like, oh, like, I'm just an actor or mm-hmm. I'm just a dancer. But it was like, Zendaya, like, was not limited by the fact that she was on a Disney Channel show. Like, she was like, yeah, I act, but she's like, but I'm gonna drop replay and show y'all that I can actually dance. Yeah. I'm a dancer. Like, yes. she is a dancer. And I'm gonna And she can also sing. Sense. She's a singer. She can she can do a little ditty. Like, she has, she has a nice voice. And, yeah. like, and I feel like she was really trying to be the, the girl from Disney who, like, I don't know, like, in a way, it's like, it's like Miley kind of falls in this category, too, but it's, like, mm-hmm. the girl who, like, wants to be that star. Like, yeah. and wants to mm-hmm. show, like, that like this is not just like a, an acting gig. Like mm. there is so much more to me. Yes, like, yeah. like and, I'm yeah. dedicating my whole life. And to they this. all have such strong personalities. Like the people that are actually like not only can they sing or dance or act like so well, but it's like I want to be a fan of them because mm-hmm. of how I see them in like interviews and like how they, how they carry themselves. How they yes. carry themselves. It's like whenever I see a video of like Zendaya hanging out, I'm like, I love. Me it's too. just a strong sense of self that maybe they don't even realize they have because we watch them grow up as kids to now. But yeah. the, it's like the way they're the, it is a the, strong sense of self. the type of person that they are. It's like they they actively can't react how they think you want them to. Like they will just come as they are. Yeah, and no one can really infiltrate that. And no, it's literally. that that it's gets the them... strong sense of self. Yeah, I feel yeah. like if you don't have that strong sense of self, like it's so easy to get for people to penetrate that and like and like yeah. dump mold onto you. you that yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. like it's so clear that she really did have such a strong. Yeah. She yeah. has like a strong foundation too with her parents. Like she was always she talking about her yeah. parents. Yeah. Like and her parents were always there when she was a when she was a minor. Like her mm. parents were. If you saw Zendaya, her parents were there too. Yeah. And so like, which is good because yeah. thanks, the industry thanks is nasty. God. Yeah. Yes. Like when and so growing into a young woman, like you could tell that she really had like calculated steps for her career and what she wanted. And like yeah. yes, in the first Spider Man, she's barely in it. She barely has any lines, and they are like kind of like Disney one liners. Mm -hmm. But then in the second Spider Man, it was like, oh shit, she like. She knew she was gonna have a bigger role, and she like dedicated herself in it. And then I've just seen Dune two. I've seen Dune two twice, and I'm just speechless about the work she's done in that movie. Like it's incredible. The mm. the fight choreography alone, and then just like ha- I lo- okay. You sound like you're about to start crying. No, like literally, <laughs> like, literally I feel literally the like, passion. I, I, feel how, I feel how much you're like yes. yeah, Like because okay, for those of you who have not seen Dune or are not familiar with Dune at all like there were I don't want to give any spoilers but to to relay how intense I felt about Zendaya in this movie in the first movie Timothy Chalamet's character has a vision of himself doing this really intense fight choreography and like basically becoming really like integrated and immersed into this like culture of the people that live on the planet and in the second movie they do that scene almost identical fight choreography and you can't really you can't and the person has a mask on and you can't really tell who it is and the mask comes off and 
with Zendaya the whole time, not Timothy. And like the and like she and Timothy are like the same height. They've got this like both guys same got build this, like, too, same like literally, build, like yeah. and, like androgynous thing no, going but, on. But it's like where it's like but it's like the androgyny of it. Where it's like yeah, they are like they do. They I just love it. I love all of it. That's really okay, I want, all of it. Okay, That's but really I want to say you talking about the fight combat to bring back to the show, Greatest Showman. The reason why I typed that whole note about how Zendaya, I said she inspires me because okay, let me read word for word. Yes, what I, typed. I said honestly, she inspires me because I'm gonna be honest. I was happy for her at the time, but I did not recognize the act until um, with the, the Greatest Showman because yeah. I was just kind of like it's Zendaya. She's in this movie. That's odd, but great. And I didn't recognize the acting school, but I was very happy for her because like yeah, go. Like I'm just I'm happy to see her anywhere. This I will is never one of her first her big roles. Yeah. yeah. And then and but it, she's only gotten better and better, and I will continue to support and be proud of her. But she did that. Number with Zac Efron. One, she she was flying in the air with Zac Efron. How do you how do you fly in the air with Zac Efron? And how do you uh, like have his arm around your waist, eye to eye, just like and just just being the powerful love interest of Zac Efron as a as a young woman? Okay, she was a young child, but she knew what she had. Exactly, she, she had to stay yeah. there. And so I'm just like, that's a lot of intense eye contact in. with Zac Efron. So put that aside. She did a lot of. Wait, also, I'm acrobatics. sorry. I'm gonna be an astrology bitch real quick. Go. She has her son in the eighth house. That is power. What eighth house mean? rules like intimacy, death, sex, rebirth. Her son is in her eighth house. How do you know that? Which means that literally her rawest expression of herself and her ego is literally like the most powerful it could ever be. Because she's a Virgo. Like, and she's a Virgo. Wait, how do we know? How do we assign? Before before I ask this, I just want to say the, the acrobatic skill to like have that and learn how to do that in the air. That's that's dedication. But how do you assign son? The eighth, well, the, well, the house. So you to, How do you well, find it's, house it's like too? it's like I I have personally looked at her her chart because I love her so much and okay. everyone everyone I love I look at their chart Absolutely. and and uh, find the one thing that I found is that her like son is in the eighth house and like I feel like that's why she took on that role in Euphoria too like like taking on that very like dark mm. like twisted role like it's very much like like associated with themes of the eighth house like death sex rebirth mm. like mm. like very like intense transformative experiences yeah um and that's where her ego like is is the most comfortable is in those very sense intense self. transformative exactly her sense of self <gasps> or, or being comfortable with and your, that's why yourself that's changing exactly as, as reality. and that's why that's what why she has such a strong sense of self is because that's where she feels the most comfortable is like is like tapping into those like Deep, deep sense of power. How she wants to grow exactly. Ooh, my it makes God. sense why she her career like played out the way it did because she's always had such a strong sense of self that's like in her chart. It which makes is, me which think is, of which is every uh, fashion icons have to have a strong sense of self because it's their fashion sense. You can't have a fashion sense if you don't. If you're if just you don't if you're if you're not you a bad bitch you can't yeah. you, like you just can't like no. if you yeah. if you don't if you don't believe that you have it no one else will. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, just, yeah. That reminds me of that interview that she did on the red carpet recently where they were like. um how do you like do all the kissing scenes like with Timothy like uh, and do you feel uncomfortable and she and, she, oh, and right. the cop and they're like the tweet is like she Zendaya is like my auntie because she <laughs> she's like she's like what? Yeah. Well, I think it's our it's job. job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's our job, and, and and you know we're actors, and so and we get we, we and she that's is just auntie. what we do. She's, she's auntie she's, down. She is auntie. It's literally. weird that our generation's becoming auntie. No, literally, that's crazy. No, she's oh. like, but that's right. She <laughs> yes. is so she's younger than me. We were born. We were both born in nineteen ninety six, but like she's like a few months younger than me. But I she's feel like she's just like a wisdom. Yeah, wise. I mean, generational wisdom. I feel. Yes. I feel. I feel wiser every time I go out and I'm around people and. To be to have done that as much as somebody like Zendaya has, mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. yeah, she's had more life experience than I will probably have in like the next ten years. Yeah. Like yeah. just like before she turned like twenty, like yeah. she's just done so much. She she has a lot more. Yeah. She has like a lot of experiences to reflect on too. Like being out that much, like she can just be like, how did I feel? Like she, you know how you reflect on memories and you're like, remember that it made me feel bad. Remember that it made me feel good. She has so many different experiences with a lot of other people. So, like so often growing up that she's able to have more more proofs of concept to be like this is what is what make me feel, makes me feel good and this is what makes me feel bad like yeah. social yeah. stand social situation it's yes, like life yeah. it's like the the saying was like life doesn't get easier you just get better at what's harder yeah, yeah. like yeah. so she had, had a lot of life. more experience yeah. to be like okay well the next time I have something like this I will approach it better because I have more experience to like. Mm -hmm. yeah work through this. Yeah. I've been enjoying that so I feel like that's been really big for me. It's like I feel like I've been having more just like social and like life experiences mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. like very recently in my life. Me and too. I I see myself growing 
a lot. Like even in the past, in the past like two years, I feel like I've yeah. had such a like staggering amount of like personal like and like emotional growth, and that's just from like being around people and being put in more like situations where yeah. you're challenged to yeah. grow in that way. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you've been out of your, out comfort, your comfort zone, zone. more in the past two years. Which and is, I, I don't think what people, you have to do? I think pe- most people stay in their comfort zone 90% of the time. And like just by nature of like yeah. pursuing a job in entertainment and like what we all do, you have to just do things that scare you because you're not going to grow in your career if you don't do that. Yeah. And like even things like social skills take practice yeah. like the it's it's like oh like i grew up very shy like i th- shy was one of my Same. like descriptors of well myself. zendaya says i grew she, someone said you grew up shy and she said yeah i still am it's this is all this is all an act and she laughs after it but it's so relatable i'm like because she's yeah. practiced yeah you practice it's like you practice meeting people you realize it's not as scary as you always thought yeah and it's like so they like you, so they don't, so you get along, so you don't, you move on. Yeah. You yeah. meet more people, yeah. each new person you meet has lower stakes. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And when yeah. you have more opportunities for people to not not like you and like not like what you have going on, you I think you become more comfortable with yeah. it. Yeah. You're like, okay. Because yeah. you're like, do I like them? Yeah. I don't yeah. even like them. And it's not like it's not <laughs> life ending. It was very big, I think, for me to be like, oh, it's it doesn't like ruin my life if somebody doesn't like me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think when I it's was okay a kid, to not be liked. I very yeah. much was person? like, I ha- like I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to not be liked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were okay. You were you said you grew up shy. I did definitely. Damn. Do you, Jordan, you, you would say that I I was shy in elementary school. Okay. Um, because you're and so then, outgoing now. And then I feel like middle school, I started really just like not being that. Mm. Um, but I feel like at a very young age, like I feel like middle school, especially and high school, I got very comfortable with the, with the idea of not being liked. Mm. Like because it just became very clear to me that, that that like there were some people who were just gonna always misunderstand me or not like me or like demonize me. Yeah. Just for like the way that I naturally am. Mm. Like, and I've always been like this. It's just like I've never like had the words to express it until yeah. now. Like obviously now, but like I feel like I got very comfortable with the idea of being disliked, and I feel like that has allowed me to tap into my star power and be like, okay, well. You don't like me? All right. Like, (laughs) it gives me more fuel to be more authentic. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like... You walk into a room, you you know to an extent some people aren't going to give you a chance. So you're just no, take they're it. not. Like take it for what it, I'm. Well, then not. Let me just start. Let me just go. I don't yeah. need you to give this to me. Yeah, yeah. And also, I learning to not waste time on what anyone else thinks mm. is so great. Yeah. Like when you're just like, I can tell that person's giving me like a weird fucking energy, but I'm just gonna keep going. Like, yeah. I don't. I don't really care. That's their, yeah. Yeah. That's their just problem. Ignoring it. It's a yeah. superpower. It is. It's a superpower to like a truly field. be like. Because I feel like tradition. Traditionally, I would always, and like people who are close to me would always constantly be like, I really admire how you don't care what other people think. And I think that that is true to a certain extent, but in the past, it, I, I recognize the difference between not caring what people I don't care about think. I don't care what people I don't think care about think. Yeah. But then it comes to be sticky when it's like people I admire. Like, I, I, it was like, oh, what? But I care a lot about what people I admire think. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's good when it's my close friends. But when it's, like, a celebrity or, like, just, like, some another performer that, like, I don't know at all but I really admire them, then it gets, like, get, then I get in my head and I'm like, oh, my God, I care way too much about what yeah. this person thinks of yeah, me. And I don't even know them, yeah. you know? Like, yes. I don't even know them at all. Yeah. And so then it's, like, that's, cr- that's a crucial, like, er, crank to be, like, turn that off. Yes. yes. <laughs> like, don't. Stop caring, like stop putting the opinions of certain people over the opinions of of certain like of certain strangers over other strangers. Yeah. You know, yes. like because they're all strangers. Like no, exactly. Like, like validate why you would get grant them like the power to judge you. Like you don't know if they even have sense. Exactly. Yeah. On a very general. Exactly. That's level. why it's, it's so important to just stand firm in what you bring to the table because everyone is flawed. And until you learn the flaws about somebody else, you don't even know if you like them. Exactly. <laughs> so why yeah. would you make yourself smaller or like whatever? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. give them the power to 
tell you not to like yourself if you don't even like them. Yeah, like, exactly. You have to figure out if you like them first. We don't align. And then if opinions. you do like them, then it makes more sense if you care what they think. Yeah. But if yeah. you don't, yes. Right. What do they mean? Like, what does it matter? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you like hear yeah. this this quote recently? I don't remember who said this, but this was like a recent thing, I think. And if it's somebody bad, then let me know. Um, but somebody was like, if I'm getting insecure around you, I am like projecting my own insecurities on you and assuming that you're a mean person. Mm. And that's me prematurely judging you. Mm. I, feel like that, I feel like that happens. That I hear that. Yeah. And I, I shouldn't do that. I just want to like assume that everybody is giving me like a good energy and yeah. to like give me something to believe that like yeah. it's not yes that's do like... you okay i have a question for both of y'all do you feel like as a black person that you experience like a lot of like projection of like being like mean or like intimidating or oh, like oh yeah or just like n- nothing penetrates. and you can and you can sense it in the first moment that you meet somebody yeah. and like they kind of turn their face up at you i don't know that's yes. just been like my personal Absolutely. experience but it's like i feel like it's so tied into like i feel like it's so tied into race sometimes it is like it's just like you're like a hot cool black person and like you meet somebody who's like not black and they're like i was scared, of scared. You. yeah I'm, I'm like what is going it's, on no, what is going on i get like, so <laughs> many people being like i was scared of you when i first met you no I and i'm like you what me. why i'm not a scary so person like i don't understand yeah actually Actually, you, that just re- remind me, like, some t- point in middle school, this girl who was white that I didn't talk to until later in life, she was like, I remember seeing you in middle school and just think, like, being scared. And I was like, I what? was a kook in middle school. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> so, but, yeah, like, Amber was also the shortest person in her grade. Like, yeah. it, it's, it's very, it's very, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> it's odd, so tiny. It's <laughs> odd because as a black person moving around in the world, they either project that you have not a single insecurity or you intimidate them so much that they don't like you. Yes. Like, like they think that you're the happiest person in the world or the meanest the person meanest in the world. Yeah. And it's like, you can't yeah. just be a person no. with insecurities. <laughs> no. Like, you can't just be, like, on and off. There's no day. humanization, yeah. like, at all. Like, yeah. I feel like it's... It's like being put on a pedestal and, like, idealizing someone is just as dehumanizing as, yes. like, looking down on someone. Yes. No, yeah. because yeah. Literally, you literally. think that they're inhuman. You think yes. that they have no Unreachable. Flaws. Which you could never relate to them. Yeah, you you could never relatable. understand what they're going through. And that's a, yeah. that's a huge, that's a huge like, fangirl lesson that everyone has to learn because, let me bring, I'm sorry, let me bring it back to One Direction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> bring well, it back look, to One Direction. The look of the camera. Oh, <laughs> the meter. Okay. Being in the One Direction fam did teach me how to give people human emotions when I yeah. don't hear them telling them to me directly mm. like I'm the youngest in my family so it took me a long time to realize oh my dad was going through this during this time in my life he was a human person oh my mom was going through this she doesn't know what she's saying she's a human person oh Amanda's having a bad day I thought she was just being a bitch yeah <laughs> right <laughs> uh, oh, it really changed from human person to uh, <laughs> Oh, my dad's like, a human person. I my mean, mom's a human person. I mean, it's a bitch. <laughs> like, oh, she's just a bitch. Can't handle it. <laughs> no, but like, stop. But that like, is... it's like I learned how to empathize with everyone around me. Like, I, I, I they did not tell me that this was what was they were going through. Yeah. And I, they, they don't have to. And I cannot move around this world thinking everyone's going to tell me exactly how they're feeling in that moment because I don't even know how I'm feeling in a moment. I got off a tangent. But, like, the One Direction fandom taught me that because the girls would want to see them in the airport wherever they could find them and the, they'd be like he was so rude he was so rude we were standing at his hotel for hours waiting for him to come out of his hotel and you were like <laughs> wanting a photo and it's like well <laughs> he's off he's not working he's <gasps> and he's probably tired he's probably he probably just got off a flight he's tired um, he's hungry. overworked like yeah. he's a teenage boy right he does not know you you're and those standing hormones outside going up down hotel. up down up down every yeah. day yeah and it's just like <laughs> step away don't crowd them they have anxiety they have panic attacks they don't know what's going on this is the first time they've experienced life too yeah just because you put them on the pedestal and you think that they're the greatest thing in the world and they can take anything and handle anything and be able to bro- provide you all the happiness that you want does not mean you get to take that from them yeah and that's what a lot of people approach a lot of people of many marginalized identities with I, like, it, they just they just look at someone who is comfortable with themselves and an identity that isn't white, cis, mm, whatever. Yes. And they're like, that they figured it out. Exactly. Because they are moving through this world and they're, they are they got a smile on their face. They figured it out. They take every single like other human emotion away from you. Oh, me. yes. that is You explained it perfectly. I don't know if this is relatable, but I'm going to say it anyway. Mm-hmm. So one of my friends, like two years ago at this point like in the comedy community asked me about fame like she was like do you want to be famous 
And I was like, back then, I was like, absolutely not. And she was like, what? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I feel like as like as somebody socialized as a black woman in yeah. this world, mm-hmm. it's traditionally and historically in my friendships, and because I've had like mostly like white friends, like every one of my friends has put me on this pedestal within our friendship and within the world that like I can do no wrong. Like if I have a problem, they won't even they won't really give me advice. They'll just this is this is not current. This is me two years ago. Yeah. Um, they won't really give me advice. They'll just be like, oh, but Amanda will work it out. Like, it's like, but you'll work it out. Like, you always do. And I'm like, yeah, bitch, I'm a capable person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I would like some support. Yeah. Like, you no, know, like, like I would literally. love some support. They you know, you. like, but it's like, Amanda's going to work it out, though. And so you have nothing to worry about because I'm not worried about you. Yeah. And you can do anything. And you have done a lot of things. And you've accomplished so much. And, and, and I'm jealous of you. And like, I don't think that you should be complaining because of of all the things that you've accomplished and, and you did it without yeah. and you did without it without any help. and you did and it without any complaining and I need to complain because my life is worse than you and I have so much more anxiety uh, yeah like and me like, complaining outward means that I have more in my head and, and it's like some people just literally deal with and at that point in my life like I was like that type of pressure like I, I'm not saying that I know exactly how celebrities feel right. but, but feels there the is same a lived experience yes of being dehumanized that yes. celebrities also experience. Like, yes. I relate. But we experience on a very personal level. Yeah. I, I've related yeah. Which is every honestly single... like, yeah, it's just like very intense. Because we don't get damaging. the brand deal from the money no. and, the, and the glory. We don't get anything to fucking glam. balance it out. We don't get any money. We don't get any support. We don't get any opportunities. It's, it's just, just, I'm having a bad day and just, you won't see that. Yeah, yeah. literally. Like, <laughs> every every single time I've heard like a YouTuber or like a celebrity be like, guys, like, I don't really want to complain, but like, this is kind of, I'm struggling with this. Like, I'm struggling with y'all not thinking that I'm human. And I've related to it like my like since I was in middle school, probably I like I'll I'll just hear it because I'm like obsessive. And so I watch all the behind the scenes and I hear what they're saying. And I'm like, I felt that and I have felt that. And like at that point in my life, I was like, I'm content to just be behind the camera and just write and direct and just like to not tell my stories through story and not from my own literally the not because I don't want to be perceived because everybody nobody's going to perceive me correctly Correctly. so just don't look at me so don't so just don't perceive me at all don't perceive me because I don't want to be on that pedestal like I don't want to I already feel like my close friends put me on a pedestal so I don't want the world to put me on a pedestal oh my god yeah but I had a few friendship break up yes good I think it's good. Not that yeah. I, I have that I have never talked about this podcast, and hopefully they're not. Oh my listening. god, they're definitely. Listening. We're th- uh, we're we're thick into the de- we're thick into listen. the episode now. Right, so right. It's like it, you got to listen all the way through, and if they're listening, then they're that, obsessed. They're obsessed. Yeah. Um, they're, and, they're the fangirls. Yeah. <laughs> <Stop>. Hey y'all. <laughs> Oh um, hi! Oh hey! <laughs> but I've had it's, and and I and I've had some healing friendships, Good. you two included, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. where I feel like I can be my full self and like be with people that have a sense of self yeah. and recognize and have mutual admiration without putting each other on a pedestal, mm-hmm. like and understanding each other as a full human being. Yeah, and 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 with with doing this podcast and with working with Amber, like that was also before I had started working with Amber. And like being like, oh, like, so, like if I say something from my mouth and from my experience, it does have value. Like doing this podcast does have value and will help people. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, look, I've done 28 years of research about what it is like to be famous. Yeah, right. On accident. No. I'll do it. <laughs> no, and that's I'll the thing. I'll do it if no one else if no one else will. No, and that's the, but I'll that's, do it. But that's the it. thing. Like I feel like I went through such a intense period of wanting to wear a cloak, like metaphorically mm-hmm. wear a cloak and just be a figure who is not perceived yes. mm-hmm. because of that trauma, because yeah, mm-hmm. of people putting me on a, either on a pedestal or mm-hmm. literally putting me all the way down as the like demonic bitch who they yeah. should literally like fight against to the to the till they die. It's yeah. too black um, and white. Yeah. It's too extreme. It's yes. Like, what about let me just figure and it's it out? Like, <laughs> it's like I couldn't I couldn't exist in that gray area. There was no space for me to exist in the gray area. So I was like, I don't want to be perceived. But then it's like it's like sur- surrounding yourself with the right people is so important because when you have people who validate and see the whole complexity of who you are and like you know and and, like they just normalize your Mm -hmm. existence essentially Mm -hmm. and like and like heal all that past trauma it's like well no actually i do deserve to take up space and i actually do want that i actually do want the experience of being noticed like on a large scale because 
It's just validation. It's because it's it's, it's like yeah, it's, it's it's just like it's validation that you are not like whatever whatever you have been told or what you're feeling like you've been told time and time again is like actually delusional on their part. So it's like you're just kind of like I, I found these people who know exactly what I mean. This is these are not the only people who know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. You're like, mm, there are more people. Who there know are more what people I'm who going. know exactly mm. what I mean, and it's like, and also like. I feel like there just comes a point in like your life where like you don't want to make yourself smaller anymore. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like it's like it's like it's like it's it's easier to make yourself smaller to not experience all the projection and whatever and ever, but then it's it literally you surround yourself with the right people and you realize like no, it actually feels really good to be seen. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. can't and I want to be seen more. And yeah. I want to be seen on a large you scale. Yeah. Yeah. I, your how, life. how you want to be seen. Seeing how you see yourself and like you start to realize how to hold yourself. In a way that it's like I see myself this way, and if someone else doesn't, they're not. Yeah, and it feels so good. To they're not even on the people, fucking plane. Yeah, like <laughs> when like, people see yeah, your personality and are yeah. like, "More, like I want more, like I want you to be bigger, like yeah. I yeah. don't want you to be smaller. I want you yeah. to bring more of yourself yes. to the table, and you feel more validated than that." Like that's why I again, like the past two years have felt like so much growth for me because me I'm like too. I'm. I finally around people who I think are actually trying to get me to be more myself. Exactly. Yes. More of that. Yourself. It's like, yes, I love that. More of that. Yeah. yeah. Like, more of the star and, quality. And yeah. not dampening. Because because you don't yeah. even realize that you're doing it. When you're doing it, you no. don't realize that you're making yourself smaller. And you don't realize that you're dampening your light. And you start to and you don't, not recognize yourself. And you start to not recognize yourself. And like, being like like doing this podcast and doing like the work that we have been doing together, like, has taken me back to my roots as a child like what I wanted to do as a child and I remember being so delusionally confident when I was like 10 yeah and like then I grew up and I was like yeah I don't know what she was thinking yeah but, but it's then like, it's no, like she you was come thinking back and the right she thing. was thinking yeah. the right thing yeah though. like and, and she was thinking what she was thinking before everyone else's thoughts got into her yeah exactly. literally exactly and like ha so it's so important I feel like it's crucial as an artist to be around people that get it. want you to expand yeah. and not yeah. get smaller. Yeah. I think as anyone, yeah. like yeah. it's mm. it's so crazy when I can think back on friendships and I can think back on people telling me certain things that were like asking me to make myself smaller, asking me to like down, being Ugh. like, I don't like that. I don't like when you do that. That's not. And it's like I wasn't ever. I was just being myself, expressing myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I was so, like, empathetic and so shy for so long that I felt like I was, like, oh, well, maybe I, like, don't understand. But the more and you, more... You can't surround yourself with people who get insecure around your natural self-expression. Yeah. yeah. Say that. Like, you just... Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Like, there is there is no room for that <laughs> because there's always going to be a, 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 an outcome of me making myself smaller so that you stay in my life. You have right. to go. Yeah. I only have room for people who want more of, me. of the goodness, yes. more of the light, more yeah. of the star quality. Like it's right. like there, I don't have room for people who get insecure over something that is so innate to my existence yeah. as a human being. Right. Well, it's also like, it's like when they tell you, okay, stop doing that because it's making you uncomfortable. Stop, stop. Whatever, whatever they, they say, it's like, you're asking me to stop being normal to myself. Right. This and is I normal for me. I have to be me. with myself all the time. And you're exactly. telling me to stop this trait that comes naturally to me. And so now yeah. I can't recognize myself and you're the one in your own head. And I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to be around anyone who uh, thinks that I should be more of, like, like oh, I'm, I, I'm for I them. want your, yes. like, it, I have room for insecurity for people, like, I have room for insecurity that has nothing to do with with me. Yeah. yeah. You're, yeah you're insecure same. about things about yourself. Right. That's fine. Yes. I, I want to hold space for that because everyone gets insecure about listen. I don't yeah. have room for insecurity that involves me yeah. and no, my expression. No, no. Don't tell me. Don't that. tell me don't that it's my problem that I'm doing this and it's making making your life worse. Yes. Right. Like, like when, <laughs> when I feel uncomfortable giving like a life update or like a career update to somebody, I'm like, it rings off alarm bells mm -hmm. yes. in my head because mm -hmm. I'm like, that, that why can't I tell them? This good why thing can't about I myself? tell them? Why do I think that they're gonna feel like worse about themselves just because something good is happening to me? And yeah. why, like, do I feel the evil eye coming in? Because mm. the evil eye is very real. Mm. It's oh, it's so real. real. Down. Yeah. It, you got to get it away from you. Evil yeah. eye is on you. It, makes, <laughs> yeah. it just puts you down, down, and you're and you're like, when they ask you, you're like, yeah, something good happened, but you know, I had a bad day yesterday, and like, and you and you're like saying that 
you yeah, you have to counter. You, you have, have to counteract counter it with something, with something that you're. And like, then that makes you sad because you know how you can smile and trick yourself into being in a good mood. Yeah, being happy about something and then having to immediately follow it up with something that's bad does not let you be happy about that good thing that just happened to you. No, yeah. and I even did it when I was like, I don't know if this is relatable. Earlier on this podcast, I was like, I don't know if this is relatable, but. But it's like, I who's the audience? Our audience is superstars. I gotta say something. It's exactly. relatable to superstars. Yeah. Literally. Come on. Uh, literally. Come on. Oh my okay. god. Okay. <laughs> like, why am I trying to be relatable to stank ass people? <sighs> exactly. Because they stank. Yeah. And they'll they keep stank. stanking. It's like, take a spiritual shower. Please. Yeah. Okay, because you stank. Figure <laughs> yourself out. Because those are the haters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to be related to haters, and it's also no. Like, literally, being a Hatering. superstar doesn't even have to relate to entertainment or like no. performing. Like you yeah. can be a superstar in, in your, your field. own life. It's yes, a, like and, as a person, like yeah. if you yeah. are confident and you are happy and you believe in yourself and you like say what you want, say that shit with your chest, right? Yes. And <laughs> be your own fucking best. <laughs> Right. Say that shit with your chest. Keep Keep revealing what's next. next. Yes, and and yeah. Okay, Uh, what? What did she say? Um, She said, why do you care so much whose dick I ride? Right. Like... (laughs) She said, what's yours is yours. Why do you care? Oh, oh, I guess you're pressed. Oh. (laughs) Period. (laughs) But it's like, like, I recognize that girl. That girl that is confident. Right. And that is like embodied and that just like loves themselves and loves what they're doing and is so happy to be Mm. there and experiencing the world like 100% the way that they do it. When I meet them, it doesn't matter who they are, I'm just like, Oh, you. go. You. Continue. Oh, you are. And you that. root for them naturally. Yeah, it's like. It's, when it's, you're a confident bitch. Say that with your chest. Like, it's literally when someone says something with their chest, it's like, yeah. It's like a, right. gen, it's a je ne sais quoi. And I feel and like I, just, I gravitate towards that. I gravitate yeah, towards me, people who say things with their chest. I'm like, yes. you really believe that. And now I believe it. Too right. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, like it's literally like a bright light. It's like, yeah. It's like, well, I was literally taught we. So we were like filming like a TikTok the other day, and I was like so tired and <laughs> so depressed, and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. We went to lunch, got a beer and a shot, and Come I on. was like, and I was like, you know what, Amber. Sometimes people have star quality, and you can just recognize it. And I and there's something in Dennis Aqua, and when and, and and when you meet them, you know it, and when you meet them, you know it in your chest, and it's just relating to this conversation because I because I was just, I was giving myself a pep talk. I was like, you know it, and and, and and we're right where we need to be, and we're gonna make this tuck talk, and we're gonna edit it, and we're gonna we're gonna finish this day out. We're gonna finish it. Yeah, right. A little boost, and it is just like you have to have that you have yourself. to be delusional, but it's not even delusion. It's, it's like not. belief in something you cannot see yet. Yes, yes. yes. But you know it's but coming. You know but you it. know it's coming. Yeah. And I'm Kay. I want to say that the greatest show, not to bring up whoever this horrible man is based off of, but he did that. He said, <laughs> he said, I want to make the greatest that. show in the world. Right. And he did exploit. Let's say it was Hugh Jackman <laughs> and not P.C. Barnum. Yeah. Because Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman said, oh. I'm going to. Because the way the way they framed it in the movie is they said they, they made Hugh Jackman like go and find all these people and be like, you need to believe in yourself. They didn't really show it as like him exploiting them and exploiting them until like halfway through. Right. But I thought it was magical at the beginning where he was like, Me too. Come out of the come, come out of the shadows. Right. Because you need to be celebrated. Yeah. There's a message in that. Yeah. No, come alive. I'm serious. I was in my living room by myself watching this movie. Come alive comes on and I'm in the back of my living room sobbing <laughs> while doing the choreography to come alive. Because the world becomes the fantasy of the world and you sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. And yeah. then the children start doing the dance in the audience and I'm just sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. I'm like, you can do whatever you want. I saw whatever crying. you want. I start crying twice in this rewatch. I cried at the This Is Me when they busted into that yeah. party. I was like, yeah, go. When they bust in <laughs> the party, when they bust in the party, <laughs> it is so, it is like, it is like gay right. Yes, you know it, is. I mean? they said, it is. They said, don't crazy. they turn around? They're like, they're like about to leave and they're like, <laughs> she bust in that part. I'm like, yeah. And Zendaya is she's not in the party, but then when they start to perform, she's she's in there and she looks at Zach Efron. And she's like, this is me. Right. Right. Oh. right. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh, I am brave. I am Bruce. I am who I'm meant, meant to be. Oh, this, this is me. me. Yeah. Amazing. Look how here I go. Look how cause here they come. And then the second time I cried is when Zac Efron slid into the finale and said, "Oh, I cried! I cried when he slid." I was like, wait, "When, when, um, wait, when uh, Hugh Jackman like takes the hat and puts and it on, on, on Zac Efron, and then he goes, Ugh. he said, like, 'I'm gonna go.'" <laughs> 
Oh my god, we're like getting so crazy. No, this is crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, my god. Not, on the ceiling. On this. Yeah. It's the up, ceiling. On the ceiling. You got it. You got it. I, I, we're. Oh my god. That reminds me. We're literally creating an, a, another earthquake. Yeah, we are right now. Earthquake. No, earthquake. How about I? I have like literally this. This moment haunts me. It haunts me every day. Like I think about this moment every single day, and I want to know if y'all clock this. Okay. When, what is the song? Um. What's the song? What's the song? You were, are you talking about the bartender? <laughs> oh, I did want to mention the bartender. The bartender in the other side is literally doing the most. <laughs> like he is he is choreography for his life. No, like give he, it your all. he is an essential part of that scene. Like I'm if, sure. if y'all if yeah. y'all have not seen Greatest Woman, put it put it on there and are look no at the small bartender. parts, only small actors. They only always. small right. actors. No, talk about it. Yes. No. Yeah. The, the the song where Hugh Jackman comes back and they all forgive him like immediately. <laughs> and they like start stomping in the bar and then he's they're like, go get your wife. Life. And she literally also forgives Amelia, but he's like, These eyes will not be blinded by the light. He is literally <laughs> running for his life. These eyes will not be blinded by the light. Yes. Oh my God. The visual is incredible. I really hope that. Yes. Charging. And he's determined. He's determined. Okay, I want to mention. <laughs> Ah. He's I, running for his life singing at the top of his lungs. I bet you he was singing live. Wolverine! No, probably. Wolverine! He probably was, like, for the, for the effect. Like, yes, for the, yeah. For the effect. Do you yeah. think because that they could get... Like he's singing. Do you think he's that... He's out of breath. Do you think that they could get Hugh Jackman to do a Wolverine musical? Oh, 100 Girl, he wants to. Yeah. He, he wants to. I want, so I want him to be shirtless with claws just mad singing. Y'all, the Wolverine uh, Deadpool movie that's coming out this year, uh -uh. I will perish. Yeah. I will... That's my grave. Like I love. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think I I'm really hope Jordan is Deadpool. melting. Oh my god! I'm obsessed. Oh my god! Like I'm obsessed with Deadpool. I have to. Y'all have to know this about me. I read so much Deadpool Spider-Man fan fiction. Deadpool and Wolverine Whoa. do Deadpool's something to me. Deadpool's bisexual really? canon. Both of them. Oh my goodness! See, like they are the sexiest, me. the sexiest superheroes. They better, have, they better have seat cleaner in those theaters because. <laughs> oh my god! It is I hope that crazy. Andrew Garfield makes an appearance. Andrew Garfield what the is sexy. Fuck? Because Andrew Garfield and Ryan Reynolds made a petition for them to be in a movie together and to kiss as Spider Man and Deadpool, and that's why they kissed in real life. For that they need to show. kiss. I will lose. Andrew they Garfield okay. is bisexual. Shit. He is. I will lose. Y'all, we cannot. I want to back Andrew, Andrew Garfield. Garfield. We cannot talk. About I want to back him. I want to back him now. Where is he? The <laughs> other day. The other day. We were at a coffee shop, and a guy, I swear to God, walked in, looked exactly like Andrew Garfield with jet black we hair. We froze. We froze. We I said, said, is that Andrew Garfield? We were, we were in a heated discussion. <laughs> no, the way... It was was Andrew Garfield filming it, something? It, it wasn't, wasn't Andrew it wasn't Garfield, him, but it looked but exactly it was, like him with jet black hair. I said, I said, if someone had a camera on us the entire time that this man walked in the door, like, on that man and us, if they cut to, it would look like we hated this man's guts for no reason, because we were looking we at were like. like I want For what reason do you look so much Who's like the, Andrew Garfield? Right, we're like, what the Who's fuck the is, fuck is that? that? The, <laughs> man the audacity of you to look so much like Andrew Garfield and walk into this. It was shop eight a.m. Right too. It was, I was like. like at 8 a.m., you're looking that much like Andrew Garfield? Yeah. For what? Find a wife. Come on. For what? Get the, and then, at, like, when he. We, and you're we not coming up to us? As right. he was walking out, we were like, when he left the door, when he left the coffee shop, we were like, we looked at each other, we were like, <laughs> no, because he needed he needed to he needed to be about it. Arrest him! No, I'm <laughs> arrest him and bring him back. Uh, the Social <laughs> Network was my favorite movie for the last decade, and I was on the Andrew Garfield train mm. in the 2010s. In the mm. 2010s, the Amazing Spider-Man's coming back in theaters. <gasps> the Amazing Spider-Man's coming back in theaters. We need to go see it. The, okay, yes, the yeah. The breath that it. you just breathe <laughs> <laughs> at the Amazing Spider-Man coming back in the theater. The Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man when released into theaters. Okay, no, I would no like uh no let's go when and let's where go. because let's go. yeah let's do it. Let's I go. love to whoop and holler in the theater. No, me too. I love to be loud. I love to be annoying <laughs> and loud. On the edge we of went to seat. go see we went to go see Love Lies Bleeding this week, and I swear it was on a Wednesday night. I didn't think anyone was gonna be there. It was, it was the full of lesbians experience. whooping and hollering. It was the funniest experience I've ever seen, and I was so I scared. Literally, a woman on steroids I literally I got a full thing of popcorn for my, free for my birthday, and during one like really intense scene, everybody had like was like holding their breath, and then I was like. <gasps> and the popcorn spilled and everyone, everyone laughed. laughed. Wait, it, was it was like, like we were all in it together. Everyone was so tense and Amanda we were in there together and everyone started laughing. It was a nervous tick. It was like, oh, uh, 
It, that, oh my that, god, that, that movie's Studio. intense. I, I want to watch. Y'all it. need to go watch. I take, to go I take it. Jordan to watch movies with me, and it is so wild because I, it will be like dead quiet, and then <laughs> somebody will say something, and Jordan will go, "No." <laughs> 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 that's no, like, that's exactly that's exactly what was happening in this screening. Some girl was like, some girl was like, oh, <laughs> and we yeah, all laughed. The whole theater cut the up. The whole theater. I love commenting during film. Me, Me too. too. It's so fun. There are specific like theater going experiences where it's like you're in a full theater and no one says anything, or you're in a full theater and we're all in this together. Yes. That's how it was with Megan, and that's how, Mithrigan. Not Megan. And that's Mithrigan. how it is. Mithrigan. I was like, what did you just say? I love Mithrigan. That's how it was with Mithrigan. Mithrigan. <laughs> well, I didn't think, I was like, well, they might not know what Megan I'm talking about. And that's also how it was with Madam Web. And Black Panther. That was a very Now, Black Panther, experience. I remember oh, seeing that man. in theaters and, and it was hilarious. everyone was commenting. Everyone. They were like, ooh, oh, yeah. what? Yeah. Like, it was good. It <laughs> yeah. was good. It was funny. It was good. Okay. Well, I remember, like, <laughs> I just still remember when, ooh, it's her name, Letitia, right? She called him a colonizer. Oh, yeah. And the whole, the whole theater was like, oh! Right, I was like, right, and she gagged him a bit because he didn't he didn't, he didn't expect that. Yeah, he didn't, yeah. Like, what are you doing here? Right. <laughs> no, he said, yeah. um, what you're not on, you're not on your lane. What was the thing about the color purple where people were expecting it to be as gay as the movie actually was? Oh, really? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I haven't seen it. Either. I watched it. Oh my god, you guys, it's really good. Really, Fantasia. Oh, Fantasia. Fantasia. Oh, Fantasia now. Fantasia. Uh, I love Fantasia. Me Fantasia. Too. I was, yeah. It's incredible. She was a, she, now talk about superstar. Fantasia. Fantasia. That, her and Wait, American her song Idol. where she goes, if you don't want me, then don't talk to me. Uh, Come on. Y'all know that one? No. Okay, no. listen. You need to, it's called Free Yourself by Fantasia. By, by Fantasia? Listen to Free it. Yourself. The, my, my. She goes off on that song. I That's might have a Fantasia phase because my only memory is just like being a small child and knowing that the whole, all of black America and white America was rooting for Fantasia on American Idol. And I and I just remember that viscerally in my mind. That's just being like, if Fantasia doesn't down. win, we're rioting. She can sing. She can. Down. And her tongue sticks out of her mouth. When you, you can tell when someone can sing because their whole tongue is sticking out of their mouth and you can see the throaty thing. Yes. Ah! And their mouth like, is just open like, wide she... and they are just, they are just, they are letting their soul come through. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Oh yeah. my goodness. A gate to the spirit world is open. Yeah. I want to say about um, Sing that it's the exact same plot as The Greatest Show. I know. Like the exact. The sing, sing is, <laughs> Sing is, okay, and it does, I'm there, just there obsessed with... context for the fact that we do talk about sit, like, <laughs> Sing is another one of the movies where people are trying to become superstars. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yep, 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 and yep. Sing is so specifically, I'm going to take these freaks, just like The Greatest Showman. Yep. I'm going to put them on a stage. <laughs> make them stars. And they are going to be stars. And make yes. them tap dance. One little koala. And one da- little koala. <laughs> one little koala has a dream. And it it ends the same way. It, it burns down. Yeah, the it's theater It's the exact burns same down. plot. Wait, but I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with the elephant girl. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Mina? Happy birthday, yeah. Grandpa. And Tori Kelly ate down with the vocals. Her ears uh, covering up her eyes. I was like, girl, she's so you need shy. To but also, she was so annoying for that damn for that damn happy birthday song. Like, yeah, girl, it was your grandpa's birthday. You, you had to, you had to be center of attention. Like, cop, like let your grandpa have his day. <laughs> <laughs> like, please. But I can't blame her because she was that girl. Uh, yeah. Y'all, I, I did not watch this movie. I, I, so I didn't either. I just, I just know the music and I know a little bit about it. I didn't rewatch it, but I and I know it. about the song that Stevie Wonder and Ariana Grande did for the credits. Right, right. And they ate that shit up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know Taryn Eager. Egerton, yeah, Egerton. yeah from yeah. Um, also the Elton John yes. movie. Yes, yeah. who which he's is singing so good. Elton John in Sing. I know his song is Elton John. He's so good. So Aww. I'm like, this is Elton John. Um, yeah, Sing is an, a fucking amazing movie, and I'll it stand is. by that till the day I, I have got to see it. It's all about show business. The- I think I cried during Sing. Me too. Me t- Amber sent me. Let me. This is my only thing. This is the only thing I know about saying is that I was just at home one random night. I receive a video from Amber. Literally no text, <laughs> no fucking message, no, no words, and it's just her face filling up the whole screen, <laughs> screaming, crying, <laughs> screaming, wailing. sobbing, wailing, wailing, and she's like, and I'm like, Amber, what the. You're like, what is going She's on? like, I just finished watching Sing. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I didn't even finish it. It wasn't me finishing it. I was watching the scene where the the father the gorilla father breaks out of busted prison. out of prison to 
go jump from helicopter see. to helicopter to go see his yeah. son sing. He's, I don't think y'all realize that <laughs> they he's had an weeping. incarcerated gorilla. <laughs> that is coded. Please. <laughs> Please. I mean, that is coded. That is coded. coded. It's a little coded. That is a little coded. It's a little coded. I mean. Ah! <laughs> but he breaks out of prison. Anyways, he breaks <laughs> out of prison. But he breaks out of prison to see his son do his big song. That, yeah. That he didn't want to support at first because he didn't want him to be a singer. Yeah. He wanted him to be a criminal. Right. Superstar. Superstar. Yeah. yeah. They had like a whole like mafia type of situation. And so the adults were in prison and the son was like, I just want to sing. Yeah. And it's kind of like happy feet, but reversed. it was kind of like okay, happy period. feet. Okay, oh. period. Because he doesn't want to sing. He wants to dance, which I'm right. like, why can't y'all get with him dancing? Right. I don't understand that. Like why, y'all have to sing. You're singing. Why don't you s- dancing? It is weird for Happy Feet to not want to dance. Now I did also. That's Church of Christ. Send Amber a a video of me in college, drunk as fuck, sobbing when they were being mean to him in Happy Feet. That my friends put in the DVD, and I and I was like, y'all, I'm telling you, I've only seen this movie once. I'm gonna cry if you put that on. They right. put it on. I pay attention. I'm sorry. I sob. And you're drunk too. So like, I'm it's drunk. Just, it's just coming. Yeah. Wailing. Happy Feet is hard. I wouldn't watch. even say sobbing. I would say wailing. Because I was like, <laughs> no, Happy Feet's hard to watch because it's like those hawks. I don't like pin sad him baby down. animals. That's why I haven't watched seen because I don't like sad baby animals. They're not babies. Hard. They're they're adults. they're adults. They're adult animals. Okay. They're, they're not baby animals. But the happy feet. But the happy animals. feet is a baby. He's a happy feet is a baby. Happy feet. And I will not watch that because I won't. Not his little baby fur, and he's being held down by a hawk. No. no. I can cry right now thinking about that. I honestly. Know. I'm I'm really so, I'm really almost there. No. He's so scared. <laughs> so funny to just say Happy Feet is so hard to watch. <laughs> so, so it, happy Feet is, is, a, happy feet is one of the baby. hardest movies to, to watch. He just wants to tap dance. <laughs> everyone <laughs> wants, to, everyone <laughs> wants him to die. Wait, oh. wait. I can't leave this podcast without uh, mentioning Rebecca Ferguson in The Greatest Showman lip syncing that that voice that sounds nothing like her. No. Oh. The Never oh. Enough. And, the and, Never and Enough. She, and she's not singing. Like her lip syncing is so bad. Yeah, it is. It, I, I, when I first saw it, because I didn't know who she was, I was like, "What?" And they say opera. She's an opera singer. She's the most famous girl in the world in the 1800s, early 1900s, and it's, it's like the most contemporary ballad I've. And ever. it's so insane. Yeah, like, where was the opera? Because well, that was that was belting. That's not right. opera. Yeah, that that was pop. Who, Never enough. But also, Never. the okay, the little person in this movie is CGI'd heavily. Yeah. And I'm one, I'm wondering why they did that. It's because he's a little person, but he's not that little. He's not like that small. They just made him. Oh, way that's smaller. really problematic. I was like, I'm... why they yeah. <laughs> that's I was really like... problematic. <laughs> because because in my head I was like, did they hire a full Why would they like, CGI? Oh, they need, get, they need to get they need to go to hell. <laughs> they need to go to hell for that. <laughs> oh my God. Because okay. what? That's you tell me. You tell me they see giant him to be, to be smaller. smaller. I was wondering because I was like, why didn't they just get a little person who could sing? Yeah, why didn't they? They just... got a little person they and made him li- smaller. They made him way smaller. I I have a distinct memory of the really tall guy. Uh huh. And uh, apparent, do you remember this? Our high school theater teacher um was like one of my old students got the call back to be the really tall guy in Ga- Greatest Showman and didn't get it, but she was like bragging about that to us as if like that made her like a really great theater she had nothing teacher. to do with the success either. Wait, she had nothing crazy. to do with that and also crazy. he simply didn't get out all the love <laughs> in the world to this man but he simply is he not get it. the tall guy in Greatest Showman <laughs> and it was so insane to just be like, and it's like how did she know that like were you to, to call your high school theater teacher and be like I got the call back to be the tall guy in right. the Greatest Showman oh, that is so funny oh my God. I, 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 Ooh, that was like kinda my sad. memory when <laughs> when it came out. Do you remember her saying that to us or no? No, I don't care about that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You're like, next. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, should we talk a little bit about the Disney movie musicals? Yes, please. I want to talk about it. Okay, let's please. Should we do Cheetah Girls at Camp Rock? Uh, okay. Let's talk about Camp Rock. Okay, yes. I feel like we've tapped into Cheetah Girls a little bit and we've tapped into High School Musical a little bit, but we really haven't we given talk, Camp yeah, we Rock talked about We haven't given Camp Rock a moment, which is the one thing that we watch. I, okay, yes. I would argue that the Cheetah Girls are more superstars than yes. everybody in Camp Rock. Like, I would agree. The, the plot I would of agree. Camp Rock, the plot of Camp Rock is giving very much like, 
anyone can be a star. Like, yeah. You can and it's and like, you it's like, no, honestly, anyone can't be yeah. a star. No, you have to really tap in. You have yes. to be locked in. Yes. Yeah. Can yes. I say, can I say watching Camp Rock now? I was like, I was fully really like, this is me. Do you know? Like, this is me. Like, she's like. But she's Demi like, ate with the vocals. Oh, Demi. Oh, oh, oh my God. Of course. Like, I, of course. I, I feel like I'm her. Like, I've related to her. Yeah. I was like, girl, why are you doubting your talent? I was like, I was like, your talent is clear. But then, but I was like, because when I was younger, I was like, I just genuinely don't understand why she's doubting her talent. Now watching it as an adult, I'm like, yeah, she's a 15 year old girl she's and she's yeah. only ever music. saw yeah. she's yeah. only she ever sung in her validation. bedroom yeah. and her mom is like honey I've heard you sing you're really good and I'm like and she doesn't believe it yeah she yeah. simply doesn't believe but it but that that is like being a teenage girl though yeah yes. it's like it's like having so much light but being like oh, I'm like I'm such a stupid dumb bitch like you yeah. know what I mean yes. like you're just yes. like I no like I, what am I doing right you know what I mean? like, like you like, just want to self doubt yourself I yeah. have never heard a voice like that when when Neither I heard I. her sing no, I, it, it, something changed in me I was like I don't nobody else sings like this yeah no one, no one else, else sings like that nobody else sings like that yeah honestly Demi has like such a she's she was a powerhouse Powerhouse, and, like, and her voice is so compared to now. Her voice is so tiny because she's little. Yeah. She, oh, yeah. yeah, she. But I was like, I didn't know it could get bigger. But the oh. same with Miley, I was like, I didn't know her voice could get bigger. Right, like, best of both worlds. Right, yeah, right. But it did. Oh, uh, I was. I love Camp Rock. I, I just talk about it. I, I love it because oh like I, I feel I felt so connected to it as like a a musician, like a songwriter, mm. and like just like learning to just like trust your inner voice like i feel like i i got that message from that series so like deeply and like i don't know like i i don't know i it just like i feel like that was like such a defining moment in like my coming of age was like watching camp rock and just being and like writing my own songs at home and being like you know what i can't make this a reality mm. i can do this like yeah. like because <laughs> I felt very much in the same place as Mitchie's character where, like, I was, like, this, like, teenage girl and, like, uh, people were telling me, like, oh, my God, like, you write such amazing music. You have such a great voice. Like, you need to really... And, like, just, like, doubting myself and being, like, I'll never make it. Like, how am I ever gonna get there? Like, I'm just this, like... Mm. I'm just this, like, nobody from, like, fucking Westchester, Ohio. Like, yeah. well, how am I ever gonna, like, whatever? And, like, like what just... I, I don't know. It was, like... I feel like Camp Rock allowed me to tap into, like, that delusion of, like, believing... And the fact that like I can make this become a reality, and I can, totally. I can take my authenticity and share it with the world. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Did yeah. you did you like Sunny with a Chance too, or did you? I did, okay. I did. Because I really loved. I, when you were saying that, it's kind of the same thing with like what's her name on Sunny with a Chance? Oh, it's Sunny. Sunny, yeah. Chance. <laughs> okay, her name's it's Chance. Okay, it's okay. It's, it's Sunny. Okay. Um, but she's from Minnesota, and like yeah. she comes, she like moves out and is, ends up on a sketch show, and it's like. They were, they're like this small town girl, but she knew she had something. Yeah, I loved Sunny with a Chance too. I feel like I just Demi, everything that Demi did, like I like in their Disney era, like was just so, 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 so good. Yeah. And like, I feel like also, like, I really liked Demi specifically for the fact that Demi was a rock girl. Me too. Mm-hmm. Demi was a, rock, a girl. rock girl. Yeah. Like, and like, I've always connected to like the alternative, like rock indie space of yeah. music. Yeah. And it was so important for me to see Demi like fully embodying that as like a teenage girl and just yes. like be, like like doing something that like everyone was like oh this is kind of weird but like she was making it work yeah. and she was confident in it and like La La Land just like yeah just Ugh. being like this like offbeat girl who yeah. like people kind of make fun of but like they know deep down that she's really talented I really mm-hmm. related to that yeah. I really related to that like like thing yes. like yeah 100% honestly yeah. like still do because yes so many so, uh, it's so weird like being a fan of some of people that like are the public opinion sways so often yeah the public opinion of Zendaya never sways like yeah they, never people, sways. people always love Zendaya the honestly. public opinion of people like Miley and Demi specifically Sway. sways and yeah. it's like my, I've never swayed on either of them me too yeah. and it's like the public always comes back around but it's yes. like and they're like well what, what what have they been up to like what have they been doing I'm like um Right, I can I, I can tell you. You're I like, can babe, tell you. I've been and, uh, yeah. you can hop on the ha- join the band bandwagon, please. Yes, yeah. but also like keep your mouth shut on the off times. Right? Yes, you know. Yeah, like, right, right, right. Like just like be quiet. Yeah. Like like speak a little less and, and work a little more. Like, <laughs> when, like I loved Demi's album, The Art of Starting Over. Obsessed. Mm. Yeah, like, that was really obsessed good. Obsessed with it because it was like mm. very like. It came out right after quarantine. Like I feel like in like spring of 2021. That was her punk album, right? 
It was like no, no, no. That was no, that was that was a different was, one, right? I don't know. I wasn't was the there one for the right, right after. One. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so this was like our oh, start. it was like more one. like yeah. um, it was more like it was the one that paired with the documentary that was like the day that she overdosed and like talking about. Oh, yeah. Tell yeah. me, you love me, that one? Yeah. No, no, no. That was okay. that was that she was, had like two. That was like in 2018. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. I'm talking right about before the the more recent documentary that told like a little bit more, and I felt like it was her bisexual album, like an era and mm-hmm. like coming back and like being healed and then the punk album with which is the one with 29 on yeah, it which is, I, love I was like that album. That y'all so like good. pay attention like these songs yeah. are so good yeah like I've only listened to every single album of a handful of artists and Miley Demi and Selena yeah even though girl the voice Selena <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> She says but she the, loves the, but to the sing, records, but the records so. are catchy, right? Yeah. But the vocals, the, the but the vocals. We won't talk about the vocals. <laughs> we won't talk about the vocals, but she, she, she said she loves. But Miley and Demi and Selena can. are people that I listen to, and I've listened to every yeah. single album they've ever released yeah. because it's just so happened that their first albums were when I was twelve. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like yeah. yeah, and it's super stardom that you can't help but follow. Like you just yeah. can't help. Yeah, it. I mean, yeah. these are the people that have been like stars that we have grown up with. Yeah. Yes, like and this yeah. is our generation. And that is so different. Like anyone I'm, anyone I become a fan of now, that can change. Do you exactly. know what I mean? Yes. But the people I became a fan of when I was like ten to fourteen years old, yeah, that's like that will stick with you. Yes, it's and it's life. like it's because we were so young that we weren't thinking about every other thing life can throw at you. Like we were just yeah. taking them as how they were presented to us. Yeah. And now we're old enough to be like. Yeah, this person's cool. I'm sure they have their days. Yeah, yeah sure and we can and we can have a little distance from it. Yeah, and even though their first albums were like kind of teeny bopper and like maybe less sophisticated or like they didn't know as much, they were also kids. Yeah. And like if I listened to Meet Miley Cyrus now. I don't know if I would love it, but I've listened to that album so many times that, that it's ingrained always, yeah. in me and it has a nostalgia. And as Miley has grown, like her music has evolved. And now I'm like, because she's been making music for so long, like since she was a kid. There's such a it's refinement. Evolved, the, the, it's such, it's so refined. Like yeah. she's just had longer with her artistry. Yeah. It's just, you know? di- there's a difference in like growing up with an artist. Like when you go back and look at it, you're like, this was Miley and I remember where I was listening to this. And this is where she was to release this. Yeah. And I'm still with her today, feeling this like feeling the same connection to her, but for so many different reasons. And it's yeah. just crazy that you can go back to so many different points of life for someone that you don't know and yeah. connect to them that way. I feel that same way about Five like, Single Summer. I, too. I remember where I was when I saw the Don't Forget music video the first time. Same. And I remember where I was when I heard that electric guitar drop for the uh, first time. Yeah. Like I like it's like this. It was like uh, uh, I was like you were back there for a second. I was like I've never in my life seen something like this. Uh, like in my life. Uh, mm. Wait, I'm thinking about. I'm thinking. What was the Demi's first album that was like when she was still doing? Like she was still in Disney. Here we yeah, go. Was right again. after. Here we go again. No, yes. that was her second album. Or okay. first album was Don't Forget. Okay, yeah. Okay, so okay. here we with go the, again. Like, was the, the album red. that I connected to so deeply? I there were so many album. bangers off that album that just defined my like like middle school, like yeah. adolescence. Like, mm. there's some songs on that I album that make party. me cry. Yeah, yeah. like that. I are mean, scary. don't forget's pretty sad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's 15, but it's like she's, really a sad. She's song. always been such a sad girl. I feel like that's why I really related to her. Like, she yeah. she always just like acknowledged some of like, the darker yeah themes emo. of life. Yeah, and I was like, oh. It's my emo. You're phase. right, and a lot of yeah. people compare Olivia Rodrigo to Miley and Taylor Swift, but she was kind of she, she's kind of the demi of the thing. Loki getting a little demi. I hope she. Yeah. I think I'm so. like I'm curious to see if she goes if she goes further in those themes or if she like goes yeah. a different direction. Right. I, think, I, I think haven't been paying will. attention to her lately. I think, she I think she's gonna. I think like in the next few years we're gonna see Olivia do something like dark. I don't know, just something like I think with a little bit that's like a little bit more like her yeah. personally. I, yeah. Like, when you're. Yeah. I think for all these people, it's like, what, and also, what the fuck do I know? But like, <laughs> I think with all these people, it's like when you're so young, it's like you're making the thing and you're like kind of being guided by other people. And I think as she gets like to be a stronger musician, she's going to have more and more control yeah. of her voice, yeah. of, like, of and everything. Also of her story. Yeah. I think it's going to be really entertaining and like interesting to see like the art that Olivia, Billie Eilish, and like Renee Rapp put out when they're like 30. Yeah. Yeah. Like like I'm like, like where Miley is right now. You know, like, I think Miley is putting out some of her best work she's ever put out in her life 
within the last two years, and she's literally only 31. That's crazy. And like, she's probably going to keep going. Yeah. And like, she's going to keep while. going. Yeah. Like, she's going to, like, all these legends, like, she just have loves with performing. Her. I feel like she, she's going to, she's going to want to, yeah. yeah. She's going to keep going. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I got, sorry, I got really distracted because I was looking at every single Cheetah Girl's hairstyle really hard in that photo right there. I think... The bobby yeah. pins in Chanel and Sabrina, and Adrian and Sabrina, I'm wondering how many of their bobby pins have been there. Ooh, yeah. I think we need to dress no, as for the real. Cheetah Girls. I think the four of us need to dress as the Cheetah Girls. <gasps> I, we should do that Halloween this year. I think we should. No, Like, literally. this poster, Because, like, I've never related yeah. to someone the way that I relate to Galleria in my life and in the toxic ways and the non-toxic ways. Yes, like all the ways. Like <laughs> like I, there are certain, there things. are times when like we, me and Amber are together and I'm like, we are Chuchi and Gabriella. Galleria. 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 Chuchi and, what is her nickname? What's her name? Galleria. Is, Chichi? No, it's Chuchi and. Chuchi and Bubbles. Bubbles, Bubbles. Chuchi and Bubbles. Oh. Mm. I will eat this up. This, no, honestly. This necklace and no. this, this dress. Yes, with the pink dress. With that hairstyle, too. Yeah. I'm like, what did they do? It looks like... Hella hairspray body pins. Hella hairspray. I was... Exactly. It's like the glitter hairspray, too. She looks good. Her brows. Are, yeah. Uh, and then looks... Chanel's like... I feel like there's maybe one small ponytail and then everything I else is like the loved her effortlessly bobby pin flowing curls. Her and little ringlets. Raven's yeah. bangs... Yeah. Raven's bangs? I don't even understand how these bangs are working I know, in this I'm like, picture. Are these bangs real? I don't know. They can't be. No, oh this God. must be a, I don't know. I actually. think it's a, I can't tell. I don't but know. even. As a child, I never knew what I think ha- could, Raven's I hair was like doing. Growing weave. up, I never knew what was what it was happening. Yeah. yeah. I think it's Because I didn't understand black hair like that growing up. No one could tell us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's even just like just like this specific like bang that hits like just on her eyelash, just on her eyelashes <laughs> is like. But it's the, eating down. It's, I know. It I, is. It is. But it's the how, most aggressive bang I think you can possibly blunt, do. Look at how perfect you can see how perfect her eyebrows are behind the bangs. Is yeah. what is what is. That's and that's the thing. That's the part that makes it look good. I want to wear the cheetah dress. Yeah. Cheetah. Oh. Love. Yeah. Cheetah. Look at yeah, Aqua. whatever Adrian's wearing is like amazing. You know, Aqua has hot sauce. Because we bag. are sisters. We, we stand together. together. We, we make each other stronger. That ain't ever gonna change. Believe in this day. Bye bye. She the girls, she the sisters. Oh, oh guy. Oh, should we? I feel like we should just talk about Cheetah Girls because I feel like we want to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, we do need to talk about Cheetah Girls because I will say that all of these movie musicals that we have talked about are based around somebody wanting to get to the stage. Yeah. Like, they're all like, they either want to put on a show, they either want to be on stage, they want to do that. And the Cheetah Girls is a great example because Galleria is like, girls, get it together, we're going straight to the top, which yes. is a direct line. And she she rallies them too. Yes. Like, and they hate her for it. They yeah. get mad at her, but it's like, she is literally the glue. She's Someone like, I have a vision. She's like, and I she have was a like, vision. no one else is going to do it. Like, y'all are out here running around in Spain, like, being bad. Like, who is going to hold the group together and yeah. get us to, to get the money? And like, she's, she's like, like, we need the money. I'm like, really trying not to be a bitch because I know I got on y'all's nerves in the last movie, but you're distracted. <laughs> no, but, but like, they were and they were like they were not distracted. taking her seriously. They were like, girl, no. like, let's have fun. And she's like, okay, like, we, but we have a job to do. And yeah. like, if we want to make it, we have to take this seriously. Right. This is not like, a vacation. No, like, no. literally. This is it's, the rest of our lives. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We can't be and running around it with every on, yeah. It was riding on Galleria so much because she was like, my mom is a single parent. Like, I need this money. She was like, y'all don't live the same lives that I do. Mm. She was like, I need this to happen. Like, I don't know. There's something about her, like, her, like, ambition and just, like, her drive and, like, like. But that's why I think Galleria is an Aries. Like, if, yes, Ra- if, if like Raven liter- is a Sagittarius, because I think, because Raven in real life is a Sagittarius. I, I think they're just fire, fire. Yeah. All these down. characters, yeah. but I yeah. think Galleria is an Aries because she's so like imp- Im- impatient and like like we need we need to do it. and like starts a lot of things. Yes, yeah. and like to her detriment yeah. sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. one hundred percent. I love I love her. She is a powerhouse. I, I just love like Cheetah Girls. Like it got into my DNA and it didn't get out. You know, yeah. like when it came out, I was five. I, no, no, yeah. you were five. I was seven. I remember, and I was like rushing out of the bath time to get to it. Yeah, like literally, it was. We came out when we were still taking baths together. That's how young we were. And mm-hmm. I remember we like had to rush that bath time. We were like, it's tonight, right? Because we were like, we have to get there at eight yes, o'clock. Yes, like, like we had just come in from playing outside, and mother was like, well, you have to take a bath really and quick. We were just like, really why? quick, girls. I remember she was like, really quick, and we we're like, fine, and we bathed the fast. Right. We usually we would play with our Barbie mermaids. Right, but you're like, today just, is not the day. We, like, we need nope, to get out. Lather up and let's get upstairs and yeah. let's watch the movie. 
movie. Changed literally. my life. Changed my life. It was the greatest night of my life. Like lives. it literally, like when it's like media representation is important. It's like this is why it's important because yeah. I watched Cheetah Girls and then I wanted to be a superstar. No, yeah. me too. Like, I feel like Cheetah Girls forever. is so defining for me in terms of like wanting to like just be that girl. One hundred percent. Yeah, and it yes. captures like it's so rare that you. I feel like you get like a movie with like four female like leads who are all have yes, like, wildly different and like all of them are not white too. Yes. Right. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Oh my god. In New York City, and like actually showing that New York is like very diverse. Yes, yeah. and her mom is so strict. Her mom is like, no, you're not gonna do that. Yeah, with in- because so I know how show business works. Right. With do. inspiring black women like yeah. her mom who is a boss and then drink a champagne drink a champagne yeah. drink a champagne drink a champagne 1979 <laughs> come on come on yes, drink a so champagne like- bottles of love you're the only thing I've been dreaming of oh my god okay it's so good to just like see that. And, yes, like, see it is. those like those different like emotions, those different types of like hair, like the different types of lives that like mm-hmm. a yes. young girl can be leading. Yeah, yes. and I feel like it makes you feel a little bit more like okay, like there's I nuance. there's there's nuance. Like yeah. I'm not like alone. Exactly, in this. there like, is no norm. There's there actually no norm. is no norm. And I feel like every single movie I saw that I just had like one lead. I was like, well, this is the norm. This is how everything. Yeah, should be. that's it's, kind like, of why I like prefer things like like. Like b- brats and my scene yes. over Barbie because they're on an ensemble. It's like this is all the type of girls you can be. But exactly. with Barbie, it's like Barbie just only one, one kind girl. of girl yeah. you can be. This is the only type yeah. of girl. Yeah. And Barbie, she can be anything she wants, but she's gonna be she's gonna Barbie. Be Barbie. Oh, why she's gonna be Barbie. one woman, you know? right? Like yeah. Down. I mean yeah, and even yeah. like ensemble TV shows where you see the perspective from different people. Because Avatar, you see, we were talking about Avatar like an hour ago, but like you see, it, you see it from Katara's perspective, you see it from Zuko's perspective, you see it from Aang's perspective, depending on the episode. And then the same thing with Degrassi. It's like there's so many people that they're focusing in on that you can find a character to connect to. I yeah. Love Whereas like it's ensembles. one person. It's like okay, I'm yeah. gonna try my best to fit into this character. I think that's. Yeah. So it's so good for stuff that especially is consumed by like kids too. Yeah, I think 100%. It, just, like, it helps so much. One hundred percent. You have to like it stays with you forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm I like will... paying homage to like my girls. There's this is so it's a beautiful photo. This is. Oh my god. They raised me. I'm so uh, grateful. Uh, this has been amazing. This, this has been, been such really good. This has been we've a been really talking. Good we've been talking. No, we've I'm been so gabbing. sorry yes. for whoever has to edit this because. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, we really appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. We do. Yeah. Do y'all Rachel. have anything you want to like plug or what you what are you up to? Yeah, like, tell us what you guys the been folks up to. Who you I'm are? To think. Uh, you Where to find you? Yeah. Online. <gasps> oh, um, um, if you want to listen to my SoundCloud, I will be dropping some older tracks. I'm gonna like remaster them and like re-record some vocals and then release them but my soundcloud is siren s-i-r-x-n soundcloud um i'm gonna be dropping some songs some new stuff there so if you want to check that out that would be great yes. <laughs> check out the vocal yeah <laughs> um you can follow me on instagram at underscore hayden underscore johnson all my comedies there um <laughs> i'm doing my show transit girls with nori reed um in New York at the Bell House in July. Wow. Oh, yes. Um, Come on, July. We'll do it again in Los Angeles in May at the Elysian and then in August at Largo. Wow. Yes. Yes. She's on the move. So, I know. This is some day so fun. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay, we'll follow them both. Follow yeah. them both. Check them out. Support them. Follow um, us at fangirl.central on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, everywhere. And then follow our Patreon, Fangirl Central. Um, we're doing an Avatar Last Airbender rewatch right now and either either released the first one already or about to release it and the rest of them are going to just be on Patreon. So yes. get into it. Oh, and What a pleasure. This it has was, been such a pleasure. This has been, really been like nice. such, so, so much. good. This was a very good, I yeah. love so soul cleansing yeah. conversation. Honestly. I love you too. We love you. We love you. I love you both. Oh. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, as always, everyone, Keep it chaotic. chaotic. Yes. <laughs>